All right, so what I'm gonna to try to do is show you how to make the videos that I make. Um, first thing you wanna know is that you hold the phone like this and not like this. When you're videotaping it, it's gonna show up on YouTube as, as like you're watching it on TV, not like you're watching it on Facebook Live. All right, now if you do film it like this, then you go to edit it later, you're just gonna have gray things on either side, all right, and it doesn't really matter. All right, now the steps that I would use, the steps that I use are, number one, I shoot as much raw footage as I can, if I mess up saying something, um, I tend to stop it, delete it, and go back and, and re-record that little segment. Um, I try not to make the segments too incredibly long. That way, if I make a mistake, it's not that bad. Um, and after I've shot all the raw footage that I need of me doing examples, of me explaining stuff, or doing vocabulary, or whatever it is that I gotta do, um, then I'll go through and I'll edit it. And I use the U-Cut, um, software on my Android phone to edit it and I'm sure you can use the same thing on iPhone um, and once I have edited it the first few videos that I edited it was it was kind of rough um, but once I figured out kind of how to edit it um, and I got more comfortable with the software by using its features and it's all just kind of trial and error then uh, my videos got a little more interesting and I was able to put little stickers and words and just whatever else that I wanted to use um, in it and then once I edit it all down and I'm happy with it then I upload it to YouTube and I'm going to try to show you those steps. Alright the three tools that I use more than anything are this little stand right here your phone just kind of like sets on the stand and you can just you know sit back and watch yourself being filmed and then of course this little tripod stand thing here is just a little bit more flexible um, and then a basic generic selfie stick. So the next thing I do is I just tend to film myself talking about the topic of the day. Um, I just put the camera phone on one of the little tripods. Either of the little tripods will do. I found this one's probably a little better to use um, with the screen facing toward me so I can see myself as a monitor when I'm speaking. I can see that I'm kind of making eye contact with the camera and all that stuff. Um, but this would be how I would shoot it, right? Um, so the next dumbest thing that I did was I created a bit of a bootleg Elmo using my phone and a selfie stick that I rubber banded to a stool. Um, there's probably some sort of apparatus that they would make to do that for you. But as you can see, what I want is, you know, whatever it is that I'm writing on to be like zoomed in on the screen. And, you know, it just films down as I'm doing it. I can just naturally narrate it as I go along and blah, blah, blah. All right, so probably my favorite app to do this is called Video Cut, sorry, You Cut Video Editor. And it pops up. You just hit the little plus at the bottom here. And it'll show you all the videos that are saved to your phone. You just pick whichever videos that are that you want to, like, edit. And then you hit the arrow to go to the next screen. And as you can see here, that like, you know, my video, I, I hit to turn the video on and then I go sit down. So, the next thing so what you want to do is tap on it till it gets kind of surrounded in orange and hit the trim button. And then you can kind of trim the video down. All right. So what I do is I see myself backing up, see myself sit down. And that's a pretty good so indicator. I, I actually got it pretty perfect right there. And then, of course, on this end... I can see myself sitting there and then of course I know that when I get up I'm done right so if I want to scroll back just a little bit what I can do is scroll back a second right or even milliseconds and there I am still sitting down and if you want to see yourself in the middle you can kind of go here so I can start watching myself in the middle of the video alright and I know whatever whatever I'm done talking about you know then I know the video is over you just hit the little check mark and then it brings you back to that screen. Now remember I drag and dropped two videos, so if I want to look at the next video, um, there it is. And again, I probably need to trim most of them just a little bit. All right. So the next dumbest, so the next dumbest thing that I did was so you I can see that I stuttered there and I stopped myself. So what I want to do is maybe trim a second off of it, right? So I start a second. So the next dumbest. Th oh, not quite there. Let's try about six milliseconds or something. I don't know what those are. Millisecond, decaseconds. I don't freaking know. So the next dumbest thing Perfect. I did was I... Perfect, all right. Then I go to the end here and 
you know, it's got a little silence there, so I can roll it in and maybe kill some of that silence at the end. And delete just a little bit of that lag going on at the end of the video. All right? And I just keep kind of dancing around here and... And blah, blah. Oh, I only got two blahs in there. See that? Um... Yeah, watch this. Blah, blah, blah. See? Perfect. Blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to hit the, the orange arrow there. All right. Now let's say um, on this app I want to, like, type in some words or whatever. So if I hit this button here, of course that button so means go to... the next thing I do is I just tend to film myself talking about... Yeah, so if, if I want to add words there, I can hit text, and then I can type in what I'm doing. All right. All right, and then just scroll that to wherever I want it to be. All right, I can change the color of it. All right, so it can be up here if I want to. All right, I can orient it a little bit and shrink it and stuff, and I can I can kind of put these words wherever I want them. All right, um, if you took like a screenshot online, there's a way you do sticker. All right, if you like have a picture or something you want to put on there, you hit sticker, it'll bring you to all your pictures, and you can put the picture in there and move it around and manipulate it just like I did with those words there and again um, you know you can just watch it all the way through and when you go from scene to scene it's seamless it, right um, so the next dumbest thing that I did was right so the thing is is I could put words there to change it or I could put a picture in there alright you can also add photographs there's an option up here when you want to add more stuff it says photographs alright so if you ever want to add more things, if you didn't get everything in the video you wanted, you hit the plus and you just keep adding crap, all right? And I mean, the only way, the only way I figured out how to use the app is to just keep using the app. And then you hit save, and you know, the highest quality you can, 1080 or 720p or whatever, I usually leave it on high quality, and then I hit save. The phone has the option to like rename it. You know, these are some of the videos that I shot. What I do is I usually rename them um, so I remember what they are. whatever the topic of the day is and then I rename it that so that way when I go into the phone's files and I hook it into the computer I can find it easily um, usually it's in the folder called you cut sometimes the, the phone it depends on how much you you know, know about moving stuff around on the phone you can move it to a different folder and then you know where it's at when you go to to take it off the phone of course if your phone has the YouTube app you just open the YouTube app um, and this would kind of be under your personal account, which isn't, you know, the best thing you want to do. But if you go to your channel, all right. Now, what I have is a bunch of stupid rock and roll videos that I've uploaded here, some of them, you know. Um, but if I click this button here, all right, just from the phone, oops, sorry. Then I can find the video that I want to add to YouTube, all right. And usually it just kind of tells you how long it is, which is why you kind of got to delete all the little snippets that you made or whatever. But, you know, let's say I want to add this video. I click the video, it wants you to add details, all right, so I title it here, and I usually title it with my name, and, um, you know, the title of the video, I can go down here and describe it if I want to put anything else in the description, um, you don't want it to be unlisted, you want it to be, oh, well, you know what, you could want it to be either unlisted or public. If it's private, none of the kids can see it. If it's public, anyone can see it, parents, whoever, whatever. If it's unlisted, then it, you can't search for it on YouTube. You can only see it if somebody has the link posted, right? So you have to have the link to do it that way. Um, and that's fine, all right? But just realize that your kids can't search for you then if that's the way you decide to do it. Um, and that's all about you get there, all right? Now when I hit upload... Yeah, it just starts to upload it, and it counts how many seconds that are are going on it, and and there it is, and it you know tells you how long it thinks it's going to take to upload it, um, and then I'll show you more once it gets uploaded. So when you're on YouTube um, on your RPS computer and you're signed in to Google through like RPS and stuff, then it's going to be your RPS account. So if you go down here to my videos off to the left. Um, it shows me all of my videos, right? And to add a video, again, you go up here to the plus, all right? And if that's the case, then you can add any video that happens to be, you know, on the computer itself. Um, 
so I could go to uh, yeah do 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 uh, school stuff all right and let's say the video that I want to upload is this one here that I titled 3D all right and I would hit open all right and it would start to you know download the video and same thing that I just described you would title it you would describe it if you want to all right now here's the important thing is there's the link right there so if you click this little guy here then you've just copied the 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 link and you can paste it to your lesson plans all right um, do 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 you might want to put yes it's made for kids all right but if you put yes it's made for kids then nobody can comment on it the kids cannot comment on it which is good because then nobody can like say anything rude all right but if you put no it's not made for kids understand that that means that anybody can watch it if they have the link or if it's public and anybody can comment on it now you can delete the comments if you don't like what people say if they say something rude all right uh, 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 scared of that crap now if you hit next all right oh sorry forgot to hit that it wasn't made for the kids uh, 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 the next screen's pretty useless now this screen here is where you would pick whether it was private or unlisted or public you never want to pick private because then again you're the only one that can see it so if you click unlisted then they have to have this link to see it if you click public then anyone can search for it um, I tend to make them private for a little while and make it so they can comment on it by saying it's not for kids and then a week or two into the you know when I'm not doing it anymore then I'll make it um, public so anyone can search for it and I will put um, that they can't make comments. I'll put that it's made for kids. And then, of course, when you hit publish here, it's already uploading. That's what this little guy is. When you hit publish here, then it publishes the video. All right.